Welcome back, A Push. This is day three. This is the uh, we will finish chapter one today. Uh, be chapter one, part three. Um, we've already talked about from 33,000 years BCE. We've gotten all the way up to the Columbian Exchange. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a bunch of different explorers uh, from the Spanish primarily. Um, one or two uh, for Britain, because uh, they were a little bit late to the game, and then a few for the French. And that will wrap up chapter one, and then we will move in tomorrow with the beginning of chapter two when things get a little bit more interesting and exciting and moving more towards uh, what eventually becomes the United States of America. But let's go ahead and um, start back with Roman numeral one, because we're on a different, different part of the chapter. So, um, chapter one, part three, and Roman numeral one, let's go ahead and write down Cortez. C-O-R-T-E-Z, it's also spelled C-O-R-T-E-S by, by some people, but let's go ahead with C-O-R-T-E-Z. Um, Cortez predominantly is going to be a Spanish explorer who is going to wipe out the Aztecs. Um, he is going to bring a few ships in. He has horses. He has a lot of armor. He's got a lot of men. Nowhere near as many men as the Aztecs have. But he has something that is going to throw them for a loop. And that's the fact that they believe that he is a god who has promised years ago that he was going to come back from that same direction. He's in boats, he's got guns which will fire, and a long story short, without getting into all the battles, um, Cortez is going to use some of those Native Americans that the Aztecs had not been very nice to, the ones that they had taken their women and sacrificed them, or they've taken the men and they had uh, brutalized them. Um, and Cortez are going to make allies out of some of those. But the main thing that Cortez is going to try to do is he's going to try to get the gold from the Aztecs. And long story short, he's, he does that. He, he's going to basically topple their entire empire. The Aztecs pretty much don't exist after Cortez, after Cortez uh, gets through with them. He gets shiploads and shiploads and shiploads filled with gold and other precious metals, and because of his conquest of the Aztecs, it really speeds up Europe to try to get to America. If there's that much gold um, by the Aztecs, how do we know how much more gold there might be in any other place in, in North, Central, or South America? So, um, number one, Roman numeral one, you have Cortez, and he's a Spanish explorer, and the main thing that you need to know is that he will conquer the Aztecs. Let's go to Roman numeral two, another Spanish explorer. This one is Pizarro, P-I-Z-A-R-R-O, P-I-Z-A-R-R-O. And he's basically going to do the same thing that Cortez does with the Aztecs, but he's going to do it with the Incas. So Pizarro ends up landing in South America. Uh, long story short, he captures uh, their leader, holds him for ransom, says that you're going to fill up my uh, ships filled to the rim with gold, or I'm going to kill your, your leader. And they don't want to lose their leader, so they fill the ships with gold, and then he kills them anyway. Um, after he kills them, he takes off with the gold. He tells more people about it. They go back, and within a few years, the... Um, Inca Empire is like the Aztec Empire, it's destroyed. Um, they had too much stuff that Europe wanted, and between Cortez and Pizarro, uh, two of the predominant empires in the world, especially the two biggest ones in America, are wiped out. Let's go to Roman numeral three. Roman numeral three, I'm going to title it Conquistadors, C-O-N-Q-U-I-S-T. A D O R S conquistadors. A conquistador basically means, and you should write this down, Spanish explorers. 
or Spanish conquerors. Now the Spanish conquerors, and you can write this down below on number three as well, are coming for the three G's, which we talked about on day one and maybe we alluded to it on day two. But the three G's stand for God, gold, and glory. And every one of the Spanish explorers or conquistadors that comes over here is working on all three of these things. Primarily, they're looking for gold. Right? But they're also going to bring priests and they're going to try to make themselves feel better by um, saying and claiming that they're looking out for the souls of the natives that are here. And so they're going to bring priests and then they're going to say that they're doing what they're doing in the interest of God. And they're also looking for fame, and many of these guys will have eternal fame, or at least fame for the last four or five hundred years. Okay? Now, on Roman numeral three, you've got conquistadors, Spanish explorers, or Spanish conquerors. You've got the three Gs. Um, we're going to be a number of like uh, 3A, 3B, 3C. So let's go ahead and write 3A is going to be Balboa. B A L B O A. And by the way, not a single one of these guys are what you would call uh, nice people. They're, they're not nice people. They're, they're cutthroats. They're oftentimes they're murderers, they're robbers, they're thieves. Um, and, and Balboa is no exception. Let me just tell you what Balboa is going to be famous for, then I'll tell you a little story about him, and we'll move on. Balboa is going to be famous for the first Spanish explorer to see the Pacific Ocean. Uh, he's going to land somewhere around Panama in Central America. He is going to walk with some of his men um, that, I don't know, 10, 15 miles or so that it is across. Uh, he's going to get down on his hands and knees and kiss the Pacific Ocean and the sand on that side. He's going to smile because he knows he made it. And then he's going to walk back with his men where they will eventually just kill him. Right? He still gets his fame for being the first Spanish explorer to get to the Pacific Ocean, but he's not going to enjoy it. Right? That's Balboa. He's the first to see the Pacific Ocean. Let's go to 3B, to be Magellan, M-A-G-E-L-L-A-N. Magellan is interesting. He's going to be the first to circumnavigate the entire earth. He's going to be the first person to go from one spot on the earth and travel all the way around the globe and make it back. Now this is a little bit of a misnomer because he's not actually going to make it. Um, in fact, most of his men aren't going to make it. Uh, they get out into the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Magellan is going to die out there. Many of his men have already died from scurvy. Eventually, they go, they'll go um, uh, around the Cape of Good, Good Hope from Africa, and the boat that gets back to Spain is filled with just skeletons that are left. The, the men that made it are, are dying of scurvy. They, they are in just awful shape, but they do get credit for being the first to circumnavigate the globe, and that's what they're famous for. Right? That was Magellan. Um, 3C is De Leon, Ponce De Leon. De Leon is D-E, and then a new word, L-E-O-N. Uh, De Leon is actually my favorite of all of the explorers. He is going to be famous as the person who tries to find the fountain of youth. Right? He believes that there are mythical waters in this, what is now the state of Florida, and if you drink these mythical waters, you will never get old. And so he is going to spend his time, he's going to uh, land in Florida multiple times, uh, trying to find the Fountain of Youth. Um, if the Fountain of Youth existed, he didn't find it. Now, actually, I've been to the Fountain of Youth. It's around St. Augustine. And I have drank the waters. I don't know if it's stopping me from aging or not. Um, I do have a bottle in my room of Fountain of Youth water, and maybe we can uh, have a taste of it when we get back in class. I can't promise you that it's going to taste good or that you're going to live forever, but that's what De Leon was looking for. Um, interestingly enough, and you don't need to know this, but De Leon was um, shot with a couple arrows by the Indians after he was trying to get out of Florida. And before he gets all the way out, he is going to be killed himself. So 
not a whole lot of positive things coming out of uh, the explorers themselves. But that's Ponce de Leon searching for the fountain of youth. Um, let's go to 3D, which is Coronado. Coronado sounds a lot like Colorado, um, and I'd like you to think of it that way because that's the area that he is exploring. Coronado is a Spanish explorer who is going up from around Texas, and he's going to go up to through Oklahoma, um, parts of Nebraska, and into Colorado. And he has heard that there are seven cities of gold. And so he is on his way up there to see if he can sack them and take the seven cities of gold and make them his own. Um, obviously, there are no seven cities of gold. He finds destitute Indians. Things don't go real well for him, but he does get that fame because we're still talking about him um, four or five hundred years later. But Coronado is searching for the seven cities of gold in and around the American Southwest. And the last of the Spanish explorers that we're going to talk about today is De Soto. Um, D-E, new word, S-O-T-O. And De Soto is going to start around Florida, and he is basically going to explore and claim the lower Mississippi River in the name of Spain. So, explore the lower Mississippi River in the name of Spain. And that's our Spanish explorers. Let's go to Roman numeral four, and I'm only going to talk about one English explorer at this point in time, because the English really are much, much later to the game than either the Spanish or the French. Um, the main notable English explorer at this early time is, is John Cabot. J-O-H-N and Cabot is C-A-B-O-T. Right? And the main thing that he will explore is the northeastern coast. He's going to explore up by Maine, Massachusetts, um, the coast where New York is, etc. Let's go to Roman numeral 5 where we will wrap up today's lecture with the French. Um, and I have about four French explorers that we're going to talk about and then we'll, that, that'll be the end of chapter 1 and the end of the lecture for today. Um, so let's go to Roman numeral 5A and Verrazano. V-E-R-R-A-Z-A-N-O. Verrazano. And he, like John Cabot, is going to explore the eastern seaboard but for France. And so he is in the same general area that Cabot is, um, Maine, New York. Uh, he, I think he goes down about as far as where the St. Lawrence Seaway will be starting. Verrazano. Um, 5B is Cartier, C-A-R-T-I-E-R, -E Cartier. And the main thing that he is given credit for is for exploring the St. Lawrence Seaway, which is the St. Lawrence River that will go through New York City and up into Canada. But the St. Lawrence Seaway. 5C is Father Marquette and Louis Joliet. So Father Marquette, M-A-R-Q-U-E-T-T-E. Father Marquette, and Louis, L-O-U-I-S, Joliet, J-O-L-L-I-E-T. Now, Father Marquette's interesting because where I'm from in Michigan, uh, there's Father Marquette shrines all over the place. There are Father Marquette, there's Marquette Rivers, there's Marquette Streets, there's Pure Marquette, there's Marquette all over the place because um, he was... He was an explorer, but really that wasn't what he wanted to do. He wanted to preach and convert the Indians. Joliet was more of a friend of his who was the explorer, but they did this together. Um, the main thing I need you to know about Father Marquette and Joliet is they will explore the upper Mississippi um, for France. The upper Mississippi for France. So we're talking about from the southern part of Illinois all the way up to where the Mississippi ends in Wisconsin, Minnesota. And he's also going to explore Upper Michigan, Lower Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, etc. 
um, real interesting story that you probably won't care about, but I'm going to tell you anyway. About an hour north of where I am from in Muskegon, Michigan, in a little town called Ludington, Michigan. And Father Marquette, on his way back um, from exploring the upper Mississippi, started getting sick. Now, he was only 37, but um, on his way back, he gets to this little area, which is now Ludington, Michigan. It's a small town even now. There was nothing there then. And uh, he gets sick and dies. And his friends bury him there, move on to across the Mackinac Bridge, which is the upper, the, the border between the upper and lower part of Michigan. And when they get to the town right across that bridge, which is St. Ignace, they tell the Indians um, that Father Marquette has died. These Indians love that man so much that they actually, in the middle of winter, they traveled down to try to find his grave. They dug up his bones and they brought him all the way back so that his bones could rest by them. I, I tell this story because as, as much as I have like ripped on all the other explorers, and we didn't have much positive to say about any of them, uh, Father Marquette's a little bit different. He's not, and, and he's not really just an explorer. He's a priest, a Jesuit priest. Um, but Father Marquette is actually beloved. He actually still has a grave where he was first buried, and there's a monument there. If you go up to Ludington, you can see it. Um, and he has another grave where his bones supposedly rest up in St. Ignace. So one of the few people that have two graves. And finally, um, for the French, 5D is, is La Salle, capital L-A, new word, capital S-A-L-L-E. La Salle. And for the French, he is going to explore the lower Mississippi. Now you'll notice that there's two people that have explored the lower Mississippi, De Soto for Spain, La Salle for France, and the lower Mississippi is going to go back and forth between the two countries and other countries for quite a while. But for this chapter, for now, um, just know that La Salle for France explored the lower Mississippi. And I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I will see you again tomorrow.